What is up, everybody? Welcome back again. Uh, just wanted to touch base. Just got done watching the Miami Heat Boston Celtics game two, and there's a lot to talk about here because I am completely tired of and done with the Miami Heat disrespect. I am over it. I'm completely over it. I'm really, I'm really mad. Um, because I didn't get a chance to get home early enough uh, to, to make a pre-game video. Um, but I was, I was going to post in the pre-game video that Miami was going to win game two. And now everybody's going to say, oh, well, it's after the fact. You didn't know. Like, I was going to post my... I'm a Miami Heat fan. I was going to post Miami Heat. We're going to win game two. And the big reason why is... And let, let me pause. Before we get into this, guys, make sure you share, like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when stuff's coming out. Anyway, let's get into it. So Miami continues to be disrespected. And I did a video about this. If you guys haven't checked it out, go back, watch the Damian Lillard trade video from last offseason. Said that how terrible the Miami Heat trade package was. Offering Duncan Robinson, Caleb Martin, Tyler Hero, like five draft picks, Kyle Lowry. And, oh, it's a terrible, and, oh, and Hawkins Jr., their first-run draft pick this year. And Jovich. And, oh, it's a terrible package. Terrible, terrible, terrible package. And, and it, everybody was talking about all the packages that didn't exist from Boston and the Sixers and this team and that team. Packages that didn't exist. And I said, okay, in theory, let's say a trade package from Boston does exist. Oh, you mean you don't want the Miami players to just beat the Boston players that you want? The Miami, you don't want five, like, starter and key rotational pieces from a finals team? The team that lost to them is better. Okay. Yeah, so coming back, you know, this year, I was obviously, you know, a little concerned about Miami winning the series overall um, with Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier and things out. But here's the thing, and this is what I'm tired of when it comes to Miami. All these players are underrated. Caleb Martin is a very good NBA basketball player. Hawkins Jr., in my opinion, should have been very, very easily in the running for Rookie of the Year. Duncan Robinson is the best spot-up three-point shooter in the NBA. Um, so, you know, when people talk about, oh, they have no chance, they have no this, they have no that, and they keep trying to say, that, you know, Miami's this bad basketball team. Like, and I understand Miami does not play well in the regular season. I don't know why. I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Jimmy doesn't play half the time and plays like crap in the regular season. And the whole team plays like crap in the regular season. And they turn up in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, when you watch them in the playoffs, you understand this is a good basketball team. And these are good players. And in reality... Jimmy Butler does not provide offense anyway for Miami. He's not an offensive player. Like, yes, he's had his playoff Jimmy moments where he's got 45 against Milwaukee or this that, but Jimmy Butler is not really a huge offensive piece for Miami. He's more of a defensive piece than an offensive piece. He's a great two-way player, you know, and he's a smart basketball player. He makes a good play. He helps limit the turnovers. But at the end of the day, Miami was better this year without Jimmy Butler on the floor. They were they had a slightly better winning winning percentage without Jimmy Butler. I was more concerned about Terry Rozier not being there because he's the pure offensive guy in this team versus uh versus Jimmy, he's the pure create his own shot guy. But when we really really dive into it and look at it, what you start to figure out is one Yes, I understand Boston won a lot of games. Yes, I understand they had a lot of blowouts. 
Boston's roster is way, way, way overrated. They are way overrated. Boston's bench is not that good. And everybody says, oh, this is by far. I, I heard the announcers tonight say Boston's starting five probably had had five of the top 35 players in the NBA. And I was like, you are out of your mind. Like, Devin White's a good basketball player. Very, very good basketball player. If you think he's a top 35 player in the NBA, you are out of your freaking mind. I mean, this is, I mean, the stuff with Boston and they're overrated just because of how they won and the amount of games they won this year is absolutely mind-blowing. But it really comes down to the fact of, I don't care what they did in the regular season. Boston is always good in the regular season. They're like the Cowboys. They win a lot of regular season games that don't matter. And then what happens in the playoffs? They choke. So, was I ever super concerned that like Boston was going to win the series in a sweep or just completely you know, dominate Miami? No, because Jason Tatum does not have that dog in him. He's not a killer. Jason Tatum, he's a talented offensive scorer, and he's one of the most talented offensive scorers in the league. But at the end of the day, he just doesn't have the mentality to be a true number one. He's not a Kobe. He's not a LeBron. He's not a Dwayne Wade. He's not a Kevin Durant. He's a Scottie Pippen. That's what he is. He's a guy Well, yeah, he can get you 40 points. But can he do it consistently? No. Can he do it when it really matters? Most of the time, no. So, I mean, at the end of the day, am I really worried about Jalen Brown, who doesn't have the game to be a number one? And You basically got two Scottie Pippins out there splitting the load trying to be equal to one number one. And they got a lot of filling pieces, but their bench is not that good. I mean, you got guys in Pritchard and all these guys. They're all right. They're just they're spot up shooters. What? I mean, what what are we making them out like they like they got former starters coming off the bench? I mean, it's just the entire thing when it comes to Boston Miami. Like I said, I'm tired of the Miami disrespect. These are the same Miami players that beat Boston last year. Except this year, they're, the players that are on the floor are actually a little bit better. Yes, they're down Jimmy Butler, but Tyler or Terry Rozier was not there last year. And Tyler Hero was not there last year, and now he's back. And Rozier's not playing right now, like I said, obviously, but he wasn't there last year. And now Tyler Hero's back, who wasn't there last year, they added Jaquez, who wasn't there last year, and Caleb Martin was there last year and was one of the guys that beat him. Duncan Robinson was there last year and was one of the guys that beat him. Bam Adebayo was there last year and was one of the guys that beat him. I mean, this Miami team has already beat Boston. And like I said, they're not really losing that much offensively with Jimmy not being on the floor. And, they, and like I said, this year they actually have won at a higher clip without Jimmy. So... What we, what we saw was a Miami team that was that is actually better and deeper than they were last year. Continue to be disrespected, continue to be wiped over. Ah, oh, they don't have any good players. Ah, they don't have any good players. Okay, they just keep beating everybody, but just keep saying they don't have any good players. Miami's a very good basketball team. Miami for years now has been the most underrated team in the NBA. They have more playoff success and more playoff wins than any team in the NBA. Over the last, I believe it's five, maybe six years. And we haven't even got to the point yet. I'm talking about that they have the far superior coach in this series. Eric Spolstra is the best coach in the NBA. He is 100% the best coach in the NBA. And like I said, I think these guys are good basketball players, but I do not think they would be as good as they are in Miami playing in other systems, playing for other coaches. Eric Spolster brings the best out of these guys. And we get to see what their actual potential is and how good these guys actually are. And Miami all night long. Underrate Hawkeyes if you want. Rain threes down them. Under, underrate Kelly, Caleb Williams if you want. Dominated the game. Rain down threes on him. 
Under, underestimate and say the Tyler Hero is no good if you want. Rain down threes and have 14 assists. Under Underrate Bam Adebayo is one of the best big men in the league if you want. Went off. Closed the game out in the fourth quarter. Underestimate their role players. Like Duncan Robinson, who's one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. Hayward Highsmith, one of the best role players coming off the bench in the NBA. Underestimate all of those guys if you want. DeLon Wright, who hit 5 of 5 from 3 in Game 1. Underestimate all those guys if you want. Not to mention, Patty Mills hasn't played yet in the series. And Patty Mills will drill threes. And I honestly think that they need to have Patty Mills starting because that was the one thing, even though the Miami won, I saw that they mm, the ball movement was kind of spotty, a lot of turnovers. Patty Mills would clean some of that up. He's a true point guard. And he would still, obviously, give you the shooting and scoring on the floor. But, you know, I, I just I can't understand why people keep saying that Miami's not good. And why people keep underrating Miami and trying to build up guys like Jason Tatum to be Kobe Bryant when they're not. This guy's a number two. He's not a number one. He's a way overrated number two. There's very, very few number ones left in the NBA. We see we're so desperate for stars in the NBA that we're trying to build number twos like Jason Tatum into number ones. There's nobody in the NBA right now that's messing with Kobe Bryant. There's nobody in the NBA right now that's messing with Dwayne Wade. There's nobody in the NBA who's messing with prime LeBron. There's nobody who's messing with prime KD. We don't have superstar Hall of Fame caliber guys leading teams right now. Now, there's a couple guys on the up and coming. Shane, uh, Shea Gildress Alexander from OKC, he's coming along and he might develop into, you know, one of those guys that you can consistently be like, oh man, this guy's going to drop 40 on you. And um, Anthony Edwards uh, is coming along. Ant Man is coming along on that trend as well. These guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Are you trying to create superstars out of these guys? They're number twos. They're number twos that have that have hot nights. Hey, Scotty Pippen's dropped forty multiple times in his career. He ain't Michael. I mean, it's just it's just absolute nonsense. So the fact that Boston lost does it shock me? No. Should it shock anyone? No. Because Miami is not this underrated dog team that everybody keeps saying they are. Yes, they were the eighth seed. Yes, they play like crap during the regular season. But this is the same group of guys that beat Boston last year. So so what are we really what are we really talking about? Are we really surprised that Miami is doing what they did last year? No, they're just proving that last year wasn't a fluke. That they that they're just completely wildly underrated every single year. They prove they beat number one Milwaukee. They suck. They beat the Knicks. They suck. They beat uh, Boston. They suck. They beat Boston the year before. They suck. They go to the final against LA and beat multiple teams like Boston. They suck. It just Miami's like, hey, we have more success than anybody else, but you keep saying our whole roster sucks. Why? If Boston had the success of Miami, they'd be favored to win the title every year. But Miami has the success that they've had in the playoffs, and it's oh, terrible team, bad roster, no shot to win a play, no shot to win a playoff series. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Hawkes Jr. is a stud, and Hero is a stud, and Bam Adebayo is a stud, and this Jovich kid is only twenty years old, and he's turning into a stud, and Caleb Martin is a very, very good role player who at times can take over games. And Hayward Highsmith, Duncan Robinson, as role players off the bench, studs. Patty Mills coming off the bench, stud. Kevin Love plays a very key, key crucial role for Miami, um, bringing that veteran presence and playoff experience. Underrate him if you want to. But I'm telling you guys right now, I don't think Boston will shit the bed so bad to lose the series. But this is going to be a series. Miami's going to win multiple games in this series. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to be surprised. Mark my words. I'm not going to be surprised if Miami upsets them in this series. I'm, I really have a feeling that Miami's going to send them home. 
because Miami's better than everybody gives them credit for. But, you know, Boston is talented enough. They could win. They could win the series. But I got a feeling that Miami's going to do what they did to Milwaukee last year. So, stay tuned. As always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe. And turn on notifications so you know when content is coming out. And you can watch it. Duh. All right. Peace out, guys. Until next time, go Heat. Got a feeling they're going to win again in Miami, too. We'll see. Peace.